This morning we end our walk through our four-week look at the Psalms. It's not really, four weeks is not long enough to look at the Psalms. But we had a Psalm, I'm trying to remember the very first one, that took us and walked us through what's happening in life. And then the next two, well the next one was more about what happens when things aren't going well. And last week, Psalm 27 was kind of like when things aren't going well, but things are starting to turn around because God is my light and my salvation. Who am I going to be afraid, right? That was the tagline that actually got one of the, the professors, that uh, the podcast that I listened to through his, through his life. I didn't mention that last week, but that very first line of Psalm 27, he talks about his name is Rolf Jacobson. He's a professor at, at Luther Seminary. Um, Rolf, when he was very young, he had some kind of disease and lost both of his legs. Um, so he had to figure out how to maneuver in a wheelchair for all of his life. Um, but he said that that verse, that first verse of Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I be afraid, is the, the verse that got him through everything that happened in the rest of his life. And that's still a verse that we can cling to. And the day we get Psalm 40, which is a reorientation to help us understand exactly who God is and what God does in our lives, right? I am going to use this so it didn't sit here all week without anything. So the three weeks ago, I said, God is your noodle, right? I said, I don't wear my life jacket. Last week, I said, I wore a life jacket. Last, last Tuesday, I didn't wear a life jacket again. It was much calmer, though, last Tuesday than it was the Tuesday before. Like, no winds at all, hardly. It was a beautiful night out on, the, out on the bay. But God is our noodle, right? God is the thing that will keep us up and hold us there. But this morning's psalm starts out a little bit differently. I have to ask a question, and I want you to think about this honestly. It said the very first verse is, I waited patiently for the Lord. How many of us wait patiently? Two percent, I heard. I, I got some people smiling and shaking their heads at me. The question that was brought up actually in, the, in one of the podcasts I listened to was, the last time you waited for your spouse, did you wait patiently? Oh, I got one, I got, I got, I got one yes. Is that, a, is that truth? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to move this way then, so when the lightning strikes, you know. <laughs> It's not easy to wait patiently, right? And, that's, and that's, I think that's a misnomer, actually. And it is a misnomer. It's a mistranslation. It's, that, that verse says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and the Lord lifted me, right? The Lord came to my rescue. And that is true. That's absolutely 100% true. That when we wait on the Lord, the Lord is going to be there to help us. He inclined to me and heard my cry. God always listens when we shout out. But this, I waited patiently for the Lord, is not right. It's not a good translation. Actually, the word is used a couple psalms earlier in other places in the Bible, and it's more like a, a reiteration of, I waited, and I waited, and I waited. It wasn't like God heard and came like that. Right? And we all want that, right? We want, when we cry out to God, that God's going to swoop in and fix all of the problems. Just exactly like any parent that's ever had a kid that has some kind of issue, right? What do you want to do as a parent when your child has an issue? You want to swoop in and fix it. You want to make everything right. You want to correct everything and you want to make it perfect for them. Well, you know what? We can't do that. In case you didn't know that. Newsflash. It's not possible to fix everybody, the problems in someone else's life. You can do what God does, and you can be there with them, and you can walk with them, and you can tell them that they're never going to be alone, and help them through it, but you can't fix it for them. And that's exactly what God says to us, too. Here's some issues you have in your life, and does God swoop in and fix them? Does he? <coughs> Remember, don't, don't forget this, right? God is your noodle that will keep you floating, but does that fix the problem? If you're out in waters and you feel like you're drowning, is God going to let you drown? 
No. But does God necessarily get you out of the waters really quick? No. And that may not sound like good news, but it is because God will never let you drown. God will never let you down. God will never allow your life to get out of hand. But God is never going to swoop in and make everything perfect. And it never says that in the Bible. It says that God is going to come in and walk with us and work with us and help us through whatever we see. How many of you ever, have ever read that phrase, God never gives you more than you can handle? How many of you actually like that phrase? Right? Because it implies then that God has done these things to our lives. Right? How many of you know somebody who's suffering with cancer? How many of you know somebody who's suffering with um, anxiety or depression? How many of you know somebody who's suffering with any kind of thing that you would never wish upon your worst enemy? And when you say God never gives you more than you can handle, you're saying God did that to me because God knew that I could handle it. And, and I don't know who your God is, but that's not my God. Because my God would never do that to his beloved children. I think that phrase is a little bit off, right? God doesn't give you more than you can handle. It should be more like God helps you through what you've been given, right? God doesn't give you more than you can handle. God helps you handle what you've been given. Because it's not about God setting us to a test. It's about God always being there to help us. To lift us up out of the mire. To be that hand that lifts us and secures us. And reminds us that no matter what's happening in our lives, that God is always with us. Right? Because that's what happens. I waited and waited on the Lord and I cried and I cried forever. And out of the desolate pit, God finally pulled me up. He pulled me out of the miry bog and he set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. I talked about this Tuesday morning. At our Bible study about the, the rock. How many of you have ever stepped out of the water onto a rock? Is it a secure footing? Ever? It doesn't matter if the rock is dry or wet. Well, it does. If the rock's dry, it's a little bit more secure than if the rock's wet. But your feet are wet. So stepping up onto a rock is not a secure footing. But it says that God set, pulls you out of the water and sets you on a rock and gives you a secure footing. He does something that no one else can do. And then it goes on to talk about how God gave us a new song to sing. God gives us a new song to put into our hearts to understand exactly who God is in our lives. And when we follow through and continue down that path that God has put us on, we are happy and, and, and life is not perfect. But life is something that can be handled because we know we don't have to do it alone. And then the psalm goes on to, to talk about how the person now starts shouting out praises for God in the world, right? So the next question is, how many of you have done this? We kind of talked about this a couple weeks ago, I think. How many of you have told your story about what God has done for you? I don't want, I don't want hands. I don't want anybody to feel guilty. <laughs> but that's what we're called to do, right? God... Finds us where we're at, lifts us out of whatever we're in, helps to clean us off, and walks with us through the rest of it. And then, in return, we tell the world what God has done for us. Not to bring glory to ourselves, but to show who God is and what God has done in and through our lives. Right? One of the things that, that they talked about on this, this podcast I listened to, is a, it's a Luther, from Luther Seminary. And... It, and it talked about how we should give testimonies. How many of you have ever been in a church where people have stood up and gave a testimony? Yeah, like five of you, six of you, right? When you stand up, when I would call, just call, or I would just say, who wants to come up and talk about what God has done in their lives? How many of you, if I said, well, I'm going to take the next ten minutes and I want three of you to come up here, you each get three minutes, I got a minute for transfer. I want three of you to come up here and tell how God has worked in your life. How many of you would do that? I got four hands. I got five hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, actually, because it's, it's not easy to come up and stand in front of a people, group of people that you know and talk about what God has done. Imagine doing that to, to people that you don't even know. Imagine 
telling someone that you've just met how God loves you and is working in your life. Could you do it? It's easier to tell someone you don't know? Uh, we throw things in there. But that's what this psalm actually says. Verse 10, right? I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. And the great congregation here is not the congregation gathered here. It's the great congregation of everybody. Right? I have not concealed what you have done for me from anybody. I've told about all of your saving love and saving help out in the world. And that's what God calls us to do. Now, does it have to be overtly said out like, a, like a, somebody on a street corner thumping a Bible? Is that going to get people's attention? Probably not. Are there ways that we can tell what God has done for us without even saying anything? There are. Are there ways that we can live our lives in such a way that God's love is shown in and through everything that we do? Are there ways that we can remember that no matter what happens, that God is never going to let us fall below the waterline? That God is always going to be there to hold us up. And we can tell everyone else what's, what, it, what God has done for us? Every moment of your life should be a moment when you look up to God and you understand exactly how much God has done for you. Every moment of your life should be a moment in which you see the love that God has poured over you and that the faith that you have in Him allows you to, to take that next step forward, to take that next step out into the world and to tell them what's happening in your life. Every moment of our lives should be a moment that we look up to God and, and are reminded of how much He's loved us and given us everything that we need. And if we can do that, then our lives will so much shout the love of God that people will come and ask us what is different about us. If we can do that, then we won't have to worry about whether or not God's going to be there because we will have the grand assurance that no matter what happens, that God is always going to be with us. And our faith will look up to God and to know that no matter what, God will never let us fail. So remember that He is your noodle and that He is going to hold you up and that no matter what happens during your life, it's always going to be there and always be reminded to hold fast to your faith and to look to God because He's always going to be there.